are super busy and you have so many different things on your plate. Work, family, and your own personal goals, and there's so much going on, your to-do list is super long, and you feel like you just don't have enough time. I know how hard it is to prioritize the small habits and the actions that you wanna do to take care of yourself because work and kids and all else are all consuming. Oh, and by the way, yes, you need to sleep as well. So many people ask me, Tia, I wanna exercise, I wanna meditate, I would love to read more books, I wish I had time for a hobby, I cannot remember the last time I went on a date with my spouse. I want to do all these things, but I don't have enough time. I don't have the time. And it's not about what you want to do. It's about what you actually do. It's about your action. And you know that just as well as I do. I too have been juggling many different balls with work and family, as well as personal obligations for eight and a half years. Honestly, before I became a parent, I worked all the time. My husband worked all the time. We both were, like I say, usually happy workaholics. And it was a lot easier. And you might not have kids right now, but you might have other things that you're juggling. And so you feel that you don't have time. I continue to juggle, my husband does as well, all of the demands of our business and clients, team, as well as our children and then everything that we have to do take care of the house and you know all of it all of it all of it and so i want you to know that i see you i feel you and i want to help here's the thing when you feel that you don't have time to exercise or meditate or read or journal all these things that you know are good for you when you feel that you don't have time is when you need it the most and the honest answer is you always need it, right? So you always need it. But definitely when you're feeling like, I have no time, I have no time, I have no, that's when you need it the most, okay? When I was thinking about stories and people related to this topic, immediately I thought of Ariana Huffington. So in one of her books, Ariana Huffington tells a story of her just on this treadmill of grind, grind, grind. And she's obviously very successful. And this is when, you know, she was running Huffington Post, et cetera, and just go, 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 go. And she wasn't taking care of herself. She wasn't exercising enough and she definitely wasn't sleeping enough. And one day she came home and she was very deprived, very depleted. You might be feeling depleted right now. And when she stood up from her desk, she fell, she collapsed. And she actually hit her head on the side of her desk. And sometimes people need to get to that point to realize you need to change. I don't want you to get to that point. That was a wake up call for her. And she realized that I need to take my sleep Seriously, imagine if, you know, that side of the desk had taken out her eye. Luckily it didn't. So our body will tell us when it's too late. I want to give you my proven way to help you ensure that you sleep and exercise and meditate and eat good food and have time for friends and family before that breaking point, okay? so. There are seven key parts to this. And as I'm telling you, I want you to think about which of these am I not doing well, right? Give yourself a pat on the back, celebrate the ones you are, but where out of these seven do you need to improve? And this is for you, this busy working professional, you may or may not be a parent, you may or may not be leading a team, you have a lot going on, but you really, really want to prioritize taking care of yourself even though you're so busy. Number one, know your values. Someone on a call earlier today just said that if you wanna really know what matters to you, look at your bank account and look at how you spend your time on your calendar. Powerful. How are you spending your money? How are you spending your time? That shows what matters. So 
what I want you to do is I want you to know your top five values. If you need a great list, look at Brene Brown's list of values. Know your top five values, have them in your home, in your workspace, if you don't have them memorized, and then look at how you're spending your time. You might say friends and family are really important to you, but does that translate to your calendar? You might say health is really important to you, but are you prioritizing your health and so on? So step one is know your values. Step two is calendar. And I also like bank account, but I, I, for me, I really use my calendar. Calendar alignment, Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday. What is on your calendar? For me, if it's not on my calendar, it's not gonna happen. If that date night isn't there, my husband and I are not going up for dinner. It's just not gonna happen. And same for meditation, same for exercise, same for planning meals, you know? So for me, I know that I plan my meals for the week for my family on Sundays. I write it down, it's on my wall. Calendar alignment. And step three is everything is in your calendar. It's all in. If it's not there, it's probably not gonna happen. And with that, with the people you live with, share what you want to do. Share what your intentions are so that people that you live with can be aligned with, these are your values and this is how you want to live your life, okay? And that helps with accountability. And if you wanna tell friends and family members, that's just bonus. Number four for making sure you take care of yourself, even though you're so busy and you feel right now that you don't have time, is about micro acts. So micro acts, what, are, what does this look like? This looks like doing a 10 or 15 minute workout. Workouts don't have to be an hour. You can use the app seven and do amazing seven minute hit workouts. You can go for a 20 minute walk. You can do a 20 minute bike ride. You can go for a 25 minute hike. It doesn't need to be these big chunks of time. You also, and I am a perfect example of this, don't need to be super elaborate with eating in order to eat healthy. I am a horrible cook. I literally, like my, my sisters make fun of me. I make healthy meals, but they're quick and easy. I don't complicate it. Like I am prop, like definitely not the best, but because I make it simple and easy, it takes me 15 or 20 minutes to prepare, I'm gonna do it. I buy these big fancy cookbooks of health and I, I just don't do it because they're too complicated because I'm busy, because I wanna work, I wanna be successful. I don't wanna spend tons and tons of time, okay? Meditation, you can meditate for one minute. You can meditate for five minutes. I now am at a place where I'm meditating for 10 to 15 minutes every single day but it took time for me to get there. I started off with one to five minutes. You can read for 10 minutes. So you're busy, but you have 10 minutes. That's the point of this one. Step five is if you are having challenges with exercising regularly or meditating regularly or eating regularly, hire a coach to help you. If you're having trouble with sleep. If you're having trouble with getting that regular romance time in with your partner, Hire someone to help you. Invest in yourself. I have been meditating for five years inconsistently. I, I wanted to meditate every single day, so I hired a meditation coach, and she helped me create a daily habit. Invest in yourself and hire people who can help you to do it. Take money from other places. I promise you will not regret it. Number six is, this is how to think. I want you to remember that when you are taking care of yourself, your brain is gonna operate differently. When you're sleeping, when you're eating right, when you're exercising, when you're meditating, when you're investing in your personal relationships, when you're getting out in nature, if you you know have some time for hobbies. If you're doing these things with everyone knows they should do, your brain is going to be more positive. When you're more positive, you're going to be more productive when you're working. So you might be thinking, oh, I don't have time. I got to take away from work. Guess what? Take that hour away and you're doing meditation, exercise, etc. When you are working, you're going to work faster and smarter. 
You're gonna be more productive, you're gonna be more positive, and you're gonna be more creative and innovative, which you need to be. And last but not least, I want you to remember, step seven is that all of these habits, all of these self-care tactics make you happier. Happier people are more successful in their careers and the research supports it. Talk about this in my TEDx talk. You are not sacrificing professional success. You're actually gonna get there faster and the journey is gonna be more enjoyable. Can you tell how passionate I am about this? And if you haven't read the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, definitely, definitely read it or listen to it. And it will support you in creating the identity that you want and then making sure that you stick with these habits. And last but not least, on this journey, of making time, even though you're so busy, I want you to give yourself self-compassion. I want you to be kind to yourself because you're gonna mess up, you're gonna miss a week, you're gonna you know, eat really bad, you're going to not go on a date, you're going to feel like you don't spend enough time with your kids, you're gonna et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's gonna be this critical self-talk. Dr. Kristen Neff with her book, Self-Compassion Has Changed My Life. If you wanna add that to your list, you can. But along the journey, talk to yourself with kindness. Be mindful and remember that all 8 billion of us, all humans around the world, we're all imperfect. We all suffer. We all fall down. We get back up. We're all the same. You are never alone. You are never the only one that's doing it. So self-compassion is key. If you haven't read or listened to my book, Be a Happy Leader, you can listen to chapter one for free right now. All you need to do is go to arriveathappy.com and just click download and you are gonna get to listen to chapter one of Be a Happy Leader. If you like this video, you can hit subscribe, you can share it, and I hope that you continue to take care of yourself because it will help you while you're so busy. It helps me, so stay on the journey.